this is your first time with us today, welcome to you, good morning. For everyone watching us on television this morning, good morning, and if this is your first time watching us, welcome to Grace Church as well. It's good to be together, isn't it? It's always good when the church gathers. Please make sure in these opening moments that you take a look at your worship bulletin so that you can see what is happening in the life of Grace Church this week. There are also ways to serve that are in the worship bulletin, and we'd love for you to serve here at Grace Church. I'd also like to remind you that in the pew in front of you are these little cards that say, I wish, on, on the front of the card. If you have a prayer request that we can pray for during the worship today, this morning, please feel free to write your prayer request there. Raise your hand, and Usher will take the card from you and give it to me, and I'll be happy to pray for us a little later in the worship. This card's also a great way to let us know if there's any other ways that we can help you follow Jesus as well. Well, it is good to be together this morning. Let's continue to prepare ourselves for worship as we listen to the prelude. But first, let me, before we do that, let me read our scripture today for us, this centering scripture to focus us on worship this morning from Ephesians chapter 4 in the New Testament. These are the words of Paul to the church. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Thank you, Joe. Welcome to worship. Let's stand, and I invite you to respond with me in the call to worship. Holy Spirit, we're not sure we're ready for your awesome power to blow through our lives. We've grown comfortable with our familiar habits and our routines. Walk with us, God, and give us the courage to follow the way that is lit by the fire of your Holy Spirit. God, is ours. We would pray today we feel and by your Holy Remain standing and let's sing God whose love is reigning o'er us. Son of God and Son of Man, 
the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love, as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord, to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. Everybody. Good morning. Good morning. David Sheets. I come from a church in Franklin that has a Pastor Geisler there as well. So, so I guess of, instead of being sister churches, I guess we're spousal churches. <laughs> Anyways, the two songs that I brought this morning have the same theme that God is is going to be with us and it doesn't matter what we've done uh, a lot of us have been parents or our parents and and you know it doesn't matter what your child does you love them wholeheartedly and that's basically what these songs are telling us of sadness from wherever you've been come broken hearted let rescue begin come hear your mercy O oh sinner come kneel earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal so lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. Oh, wonder, come home, you're not too far. So lay down your hurt, lay down your heart, come as you are. There's hope for the hopeless and all those who've strayed. Come sit at the table. Come taste the grace, there's rest for the weary, rest that endures. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't cure. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, up your face, oh wanderer, come home, you're not too far, so lay down your hurt, lay down your heart, come as you are, come as you are. Sinner, be still. Earth 
there's no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. Oh, wanderer, come home, you're not too far. your hurt lay down your heart come as you are come as you are come as you Hey, thank you so much. Welcome to Grace Church. Well, let's pray together. And last week in this first message in this series about the Holy Spirit, I taught us a very simple prayer about the Holy Spirit that maybe you practiced this past week. Who remembers how it goes? It's a simple prayer, simply, come, Holy Spirit, come. Let's open our hands before God and pray that prayer together again. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, you were there on the waters. You were the means through which God's word of creation formed all things. Spirit, you are the breath of God that breathed into us and made us alive. And you have been moving through all the ages, directing things according to the Father. Holy Spirit, you are the one who recreates us. When we were far off, it was you that sought us out. It was you that worked new birth into our lives and gave us faith and repentance. Spirit, you bind us to the Father. Through you, we experience our connection with Jesus. And so, come Holy Spirit, come. Spirit, you are the one who sanctifies us. You are working in each of us to call us to do all that is pleasing to the Father. You call us away from sin. You call us to perfection in love loving you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and loving our neighbors as ourselves. So, Spirit, today, would you teach us to love each other better? Teach us to live at peace with one another, to forgive, to be kind, to seek each other's good above our own. Spirit, today, move in our hearts and make us faithful and gentle, able to exercise self-control in all things. And Holy Spirit, you are the one who gives good gifts to us, and you build the church. Help us to recognize all those good gifts that we have been given, and teach us to use the gifts that you have blessed us with to build each other up, so that together we would be the church who loves God, and loves one another, and loves our neighbors. Holy Spirit, continue to work in us. Bring healing into our lives. Bring the good news into our lives. Make us agents of peace to mend what has been broken by sin. Spirit, make us ambassadors of the gospel of Jesus, that we get to live and speak the hope that we have in his death and resurrection that he restores all things. 
Come, Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, you are the one who walks beside us. And you comfort us. You bring us close to the heart of God. And today, Spirit, through your power, we pray for each other today. Today, we pray for Pat. We pray for Diane. We pray, God, for Dave and Penny, for Shirley and her family, for Dick and Trish and their family. God, today we pray for Joanne and Margie and Rodney. We pray for Barb and Tom. We lift each of these people up to you today, God, because we love them and care for them, and we want to see you bring healing and life into their bodies and into their relationships. So Holy Spirit, would you hear our prayer for these that we love? But Spirit, we ask that you would also hear the prayer of people that we've not been able to speak out loud or bring before everyone else for the situations in our lives that are just too painful right now to talk about. Holy Spirit, work in our lives. Work in the lives of people that we love. Heal and restore and mend and forgive. Bring unity. Point these folks to Jesus. And so, Holy Spirit, we pray all of these things in your power through the name of Jesus. And we pray that prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth that is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen? Amen. Let's sing together. When we gather to worship, we sing, we pray, we listen to God's word, but we also give. And so this morning, thank you for your generosity. You've been able to give by placing your tithe and your offering in the box in the entryway to the sanctuary. Thank you for your faithfulness in giving. If you haven't been able to give yet, there's still time to do so, either uh, by placing an offering in the box or later today going to our website and using the Give Online button. Giving is an act of worship. It says, Lord, thank you for blessing me with all of these things, and in these moments of worship, I give back to you a portion of what you've blessed me with. And so when we tithe, when we give, we are worshiping Jesus and giving thanks. Amen? Amen. And so uh, thank you for giving. Thank you for that gift of giving. And as we listen to this next song that Dave's going to share with us, Think about how God is calling you to continue to give more of yourself to Jesus. Amen. Dave?
our churches share uh, pastors who are spouses, but you just had a wedding here not too long ago. Uh, Danielle Guyton, I believe, uh, married a guy from our church, Bailey Seifert, who runs sound, helps run sound at our church. So we got a connection there. Maybe we should get together and uh, have a picnic or something. I don't know. I waited and waited for God, He turned and He heard me. He lifted me out of the mud, His own hands they cured me. The Lord is my help, I will not be confounded so I have focused my face like a flint I'll not be ashamed Lord I come just as I am without one plea but that your blood was shed for me just as I am without one plea but that your blood shed for me take the days that remain in my life Lord let me serve you While there is breath on my lips, I would proclaim you. I long for your return. I long to see you face to face. I long to join the eternal song union of all the saints Lord I come just as I am without one plea but that your blood was shed for me just as I am without one plea but that your blood was shed for me just as I Just as I am, without one plea, but that your blood was shed for me. Just as I am, without one plea. But that your blood was shed for me.
God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you call us to love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And we seek you first above everything else. Help us to make the decisions of our lives based upon your commandments. We seek your kingdom. And we offer you these gifts and we offer you our lives as a means of placing you first in everything. Lord, use these gifts and use our lives to share the love and the gospel of Jesus in Oil City, in Venango County, and around this world that Jesus is praised in all things. Amen and amen. Friends, go ahead and be seated, and would you take your teaching notes out of your worship guide so that we can follow along and see what God wants to speak into our lives this morning. You know that oxygen surrounds us and lives in us, right? Oxygen is all around us. If you don't believe me, try holding your breath. Well, we don't want to break any records here today or have anyone pass out, so hold your breath at home instead of here. But you get what I mean. We need oxygen to live, right? It is all around us. Last week, I began teaching a little bit more about the Holy Spirit. And I want to continue today and into next week teaching us a little bit more, not about the oxygen around us that we need, but the reality that every single one of us need the third person of the Trinity, God himself, the Holy Spirit, in our lives. Amen? If you know what I'm speaking about, you know how critical it is for him to be present in our lives. And so we've been learning, and I want us to keep learning what it means to be dependent upon the Holy Spirit. That we need Him desperately. We need His presence. We need His power living in us and through us and among us. Now, unfortunately, there are far too many Christians, maybe far too many of us even here this morning, who know about Jesus, but know so little or nothing about the Holy Spirit. Would you put yourself in that category? It's okay. I think it's a truth that we have to struggle with and come to a realization that often we know so little about God the Spirit. We can read about some early followers of Jesus for whom this was also true. So it's not just our experience. This has been an experience since the beginning times of the New Testament. So look at your notes, and I want to point us to Acts chapter 19 this morning. A couple of verses here to show us that this is not uncommon. Look at God's word. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul traveled across the hill country to Ephesus, another city in Greece in which there was a church that he was going to where he met some, follow, some of the Lord's followers, and he asked them. This is Paul asking followers of Jesus this pertinent question. When you put your faith in Jesus, were you given the Holy Spirit? What did they answer? No. And I love this next part. Let's read this next sentence together. We have never even heard of the Holy Spirit. Now, I would like to say that this is such an uncommon thing in the life of the Christian church, and even in our life together as United Methodist Christians. Did you know that the Methodist movement was birthed by the movement and power of the Holy Spirit? That it was him who gave birth to this movement to begin with over 250 years ago. But our reality is that we often know little of him, and know even how to, how do we, how do we handle it when the Holy Spirit shows up in our lives and empowers us to follow Jesus? Many of us struggle with that, and so we're not the only ones who might say, speak that statement. We haven't even heard of the Holy Spirit. We don't know who He is or what He does in our lives. This reminds me a lot about 
Jesus followers that I know. But here's the hard truth. This statement reminds me about a lot about myself. That there have been far too many moments that it feels like I don't even know who the Holy Spirit is or what he wants to do in my life. And by knowing, I'm not talking about intellectually. You know, I can talk to you all day about pneumatology. Did I impress you? That's the study of the Holy Spirit, by the way. I can, I can teach all day on the right things to think about the Holy Spirit and what the doctrine of the church has taught us about Holy Spirit for 2,000 years. What I'm talking about, and maybe you can resonate with this, of really knowing the Holy Spirit in my life. That He is alive and active in my heart and in my mind and in my life, and I am seeking more of Him. That's where we struggle, isn't it? Where we just kind of have this, this explosion one day of the Spirit shows up in our lives and amazing things happen, and then over time it feels like, where did He go? Where's the Holy Spirit now? Man, I, I wish that he was present and as powerful as he was, and I think back to that moment or this moment in my life. And we're all there. We all go through those moments. We can know all the right stuff, but still neglect the presence of the Holy Spirit and maybe not even experience his presence and power in our lives. We need to know him in relationship, to know him personally. He is God himself. But sometimes we get in trouble because we, we forget who he is, and we, we uh, as one author has said, that he becomes the forgotten God, that he's the God that we forget about. He's the person of God that we forget about, this third person of the Trinity. But living life without the presence and power of the Holy Spirit is like trying to live life by holding your breath. It doesn't work. As Jesus followers, we desperately need his presence and his power. Just to be faithful and obedient in following Jesus. We need him daily, moment by moment. But a lot of times we try following Jesus on our own power and in our own determination. You know, we get to the point of saying things like, I'm just going to be a better person. I'm going to be more spiritual. I'm going to be a better Christian. And we're missing the point. It's not in our power. It's not up to us. It is the indwelling presence of God's Spirit himself that produces fruit in our lives like love and joy, and peace, and patience, and kindness, and gentleness, and self-control. He does that. It is the Spirit of God in the relationship that we have with Him as He indwells our lives that He empowers us to faithfully follow Jesus. That's freeing, isn't it? That's good news. That it's the Spirit of God who does all the heavy lifting. That he shows up in you. He is in you, dwelling in you as a follower of Jesus. And living in you, he is empowering you to be a faithful follower of Jesus. Every one of us needs a fresh encounter with the Holy Spirit. Like we talked about last week, that moment of Pentecost where the Holy Spirit shows up in our lives, empowering us for faithful living as followers of Jesus. So here's the question I want to throw out to us today to wrestle with. The question before us today is, how am I filled with the Holy Spirit? If this is the reality of being a Christian, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, then how does that happen? How am I filled with the Holy Spirit? And one of the, the things that you see when you read the Bible is that it often uses the metaphor of breath to talk about the Holy Spirit. Have you seen that? All the way back to the beginning of Scripture in Genesis chapter 2, when God took the dirt from the, the ground and he formed and created people, men and women. And then Scripture says, God, do you remember this? God breathed his life into those first human beings. 
And some of us need to pray today that the Spirit of the living God would fall afresh on us again and breathe the life of God into us. Do you want that? Of God's Spirit being breathed into you to empower you and equip you. So what does it mean for the Holy Spirit to fill you? If that is what you're longing for and you're asking the Spirit of God to fill you up, what does it mean? What does it look like? Let me give you this this definition today. You might want to jot this down. To be filled with the Holy Spirit means to live confidently and courageously as a follower of Jesus, reflecting his character and living his mission. If we were to make that as simple as possible, And to say, this is what it looks like when God's people, when the church is filled with the Holy Spirit, it's going to be this. Let me break this down a little bit for us. To be filled with the Holy Spirit means to live confidently. It's a confident trust in God himself. It is the confident trust where you know that God has spoken over your life, I love you. In and through Jesus, I love you. You're my child. It is that assurance of faith. This is what the Holy Spirit does in you. He assures you that no matter what, you belong to God, that you are his child. John Wesley called it the inner witness of the Spirit the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, that he is living in you, Christian, and he is reminding you that you are a son, that you are a daughter of God. That's a perfect time to say amen, by the way. It's that inner witness. That's confident living. That no matter what is going on, I belong to God through Jesus. Whether I'm going through a period of life where I'm, I'm doubting or struggling or, or sin just seems so overpowering, that the Holy Spirit reminds me that no matter what, there is nothing that could ever separate me from the love of God in Jesus Christ. That inner witness to live confidently. But what's the next word? And courageously courageously, living bold, gentle, confident lives as a follower of Jesus. Where we know without a doubt that we are empowered by the presence of God himself. And as a follower of Jesus, reflecting his character. That because the Holy Spirit lives in you, get this, he is making you more like Jesus. You want to be more like Jesus? In our character, in the words that we speak, in the actions that we live, and how we treat our spouse, how we treat our kids, how we live in mission, that it is the Spirit of God Himself who is making you and me more like Jesus. Every single moment. He is shaping us, reflecting the character, and living in the mission of Jesus. That's what the Holy Spirit does when he fills you with his presence. And he fills you with his presence that moment that you say yes to Jesus. And so we can can experience him doing these things in us. There's a couple of other pieces of scripture. One that I love that's just fun to read. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. Look at that verse and see, it's okay to laugh or chuckle with this. Don't be drunk with wine. Everybody came to church okay today, right? Don't be drunk with wine, because what? That will... There's just some good advice right there, right? But look at what Paul says otherwise. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm not sure what the context was when he was writing to the church in Ephesus about that, but maybe they had some issues. But he was saying to them in the context of their lives, he says, listen, be filled with the Holy Spirit. 
Don't, don't try to replace what God wants to do with, with other things that distract you from God. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. There is this, this imperative that Paul writes to us. Be filled with the Spirit of God. Look at what else he says, what Matthew says in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 3. And this is, Matthew is recording the story about John the Baptist here for us. You remember the story of John the Baptist, where John was out baptizing people with water. And look at what's said here. I baptize with water those who repent of their sins and turn to God. But someone, and John the Baptist is talking about the coming Messiah, Jesus himself, but, so, but someone is coming soon who is greater than I am, so much greater that I'm not even worthy to be his slave and carry his sandals. But look at what John says about that person. He will what? Baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. That word baptize is used twice in that paragraph. John's contrasting the baptism with water with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that's a beautiful word. Baptism is a beautiful word here. In the original language of the New Testament, it's the word baptizo. And baptizo is an ink dying term. Think about ink and how it dyes clothes. And so a piece of cloth is dipped into the ink. And what's going to happen when you pull that piece of cloth out of the ink? That ink is going to infiltrate every piece of that fabric so that the color of the cloth becomes the color of the ink. The ink is integrated into the cloth. And that's the image of being baptized with the Holy Spirit that the Scriptures give us. The, the very presence of the Holy Spirit becomes integrated into who you are. The Spirit of God lives in you, and He is shaping you to reflect less of yourself, less of the world that we live in, and more of God Himself. The Holy Spirit is integrating Himself into your lives, making you more like Jesus. And so as a follower of Jesus, you can live in the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. We can be filled with the Spirit moment by moment, every single day. So how does that happen? If you are a follower of Jesus who is just hungry to have more of the Holy Spirit in your life, to be empowered by Him, to know His presence as a relationship in your life, how does that happen? How do, how, do, how do we invite the Holy Spirit to show up so that you and I are living with confidence and, and power and as courageous followers of Jesus, reflecting the character of Jesus himself, becoming more like him? Here's a starting place if you're taking notes this morning. This is the first fill in the blank. To have more of the Holy Spirit, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, here's where it begins. And I can't get any more basic than this. It always begins by giving our lives to Jesus. That's always the starting point for being filled with the Holy Spirit, of giving your life to Jesus. If you want to live in the power of the Holy Spirit, you've got to give your life to Jesus. Because in that moment of surrender and repentance of sin, the Holy Spirit comes into your life. In fact, God the Holy Spirit has already been drawing you closer to Jesus every day, even before you, you may even know Jesus. He is drawing you closer to Jesus. And He is drawing you close to that moment of repentance and confession of sins and surrender to Jesus and to trust that on the cross He died for your sin and in His resurrection He was raised to give you the hope of abundant and eternal life. And so the Holy Spirit is already present in those moments. And when you say yes to Jesus, when you give your life to Jesus, and you cross over that line, the Holy Spirit shows up there. And He starts to live in you. And from that moment, He starts to make you more and more like Jesus. Amen? That's where we begin. And we have to begin there. Because this is about a relationship with God Himself. And it is God himself, the Holy Spirit, living in you and transforming you. Look at what's written in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. And when you what? 
believed in Christ. He identified you as his own. So you belong to Jesus. And how do you belong to Jesus? By giving you the Holy Spirit, whom he promised long ago. The Holy Spirit living in you is God's seal upon your life that you belong to the Father, that you are adopted as a son or daughter of God because of what Jesus has accomplished on the cross. It is that promise that God has made in you that you belong to him. The indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. And so, how are we filled with the Holy Spirit? It begins when we say yes to Jesus by giving our lives to Jesus. And sometimes for some of us, that is a very powerful, memorable experience. That we, in that moment of saying yes to Jesus, see some amazing life transformation start to happen. The things that used to appeal to us no longer appeal to us. The, the, the things that, that we call sin in our lives, all of a sudden just doesn't have its pull and sway like it used to. When we say yes to Jesus and the Holy Spirit lives in us, we, start, we, we begin having this hunger for more of God's word and more of God's presence. And that's, that's usually this, this powerful experience for many of us when that happens. But over time, sometimes that experience starts to fade away. Can anybody relate to that? And all of a sudden, it may not feel like we're as close to God as we once were. And, and we, we start to lose some of the habits and the experiences that connected us to Jesus powerfully in those early moments of our spiritual journey. But the Holy Spirit shows up and we say yes to Jesus and he stays with us. He's always with you. He's always indwelling you. But in every relationship, if you don't work on the relationship, then the relationship can begin to grow apart, right? We've experienced those things before. And so there comes a moment where all of us need to ask for more of the Holy Spirit. And that's the second fill in the blank. How are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Ask for him to show up again in your life in a powerful and significant way. Ask for the Holy Spirit. He's already there, but like a relationship, we have to tend to that relationship, and we can simply say, Holy Spirit, I feel like we've drifted apart. I know you're with me, but I need more of you in my life so that I can live confidently and courageously, so that you are making more, me more and more like Jesus each and every day. Holy Spirit, I need more of your presence in my life. Is that where you are? I need more of you in my life, Holy Spirit. And Jesus said we could pray for that to happen. Look at what Scripture says in Luke chapter 11. And I love this, this piece from Jesus. You fathers... If your children ask for a fish, do you give them a snake instead? See, Jesus, sarcasm there. Or if they ask for an egg, do you give them a scorpion? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more, read it with me, will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? See, here's God's vision for your life. That you are filled to abundance with his presence. And that you are confidently and courageously living for Jesus. And you are becoming more and more like Jesus each and every day. And so when we are seeking after that, God wants to empower and equip you with his very presence. And so when we get down to it day in and day out and we pray, Holy Spirit, Come into my life more and more today. Holy Spirit, come and empower me. You are the presence of God. Come and empower me for being a faithful follower of Jesus. Holy Spirit, come and give me the confidence and courage to move away from this sin in my life. Holy Spirit, come into the relationships I have and make those relationships stronger. You see, when you are asking for the Holy Spirit every day, God's going to answer that prayer. And he is going to fill you more and more with his presence. But here's the thing. 
we are endowed with some ability to make some choices. And there are many times when I'm following Jesus, I'm still trying to figure it out on my own. And I'm still trying to do all the heavy lifting. And God speaks to our hearts and he breaks my heart and he says, you don't have to do that. I'm never going to leave you. I'm always with you. There's nothing that can separate me from you. Just ask me to come and empower you. To give you my presence. When you're tired of trying to do it all yourself. And we surrender. Because he's in charge. It's that simple, really. I I wish that it were more simple than me just saying it's simple because it's all of us saying and making that choice, Holy Spirit, come. But it really is that simple. And then finally, the last blank, the third way that you and I are filled with the Holy Spirit. And this might sound strange to you, but stick with me for this one. Live in community. How are we filled with the Holy Spirit? Live in community. There's something mystical the Bible teaches about God himself. We believe that there is one God who reveals himself to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Three in one, one in three. And so we understand God as Father, as Son, as Holy Spirit, living in this beautiful, mystical relationship. They are living in community. It's deep, it's challenging, I get that, but we believe that God himself lives in community, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's hard to understand, but one of the things the Bible says is that the role of the Holy Spirit is that he is the glue that holds everything together. And so a church that is experiencing the presence of the Holy Spirit is a church that is protecting its unity. That we are unified together around Jesus. That we are unified together around the purposes of Jesus. Listen to what Paul says in Ephesians chapter 4. Look at your notes. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other making allowance to each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves, what? United in the Spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. For there is one body and one Spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God and Father who is over all and in all and living through all. There's this sense of what Paul is teaching us in which he is saying that if you want to experience the oneness of God, if you want to experience the presence of the Holy Spirit, live in rich, intentional community. When the church is unified, there is the open door for the presence, the Holy Spirit of God to show up. When a church is, listen to this, when a church is not unified, when there is disunity in the local church, the Holy Spirit may not be there. Because it is His role to unify the church, to bring unity. We are one in the Spirit. And God's Spirit will not abide in a place in which there is disunity. And so if we are going to experience the presence of the Holy Spirit, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, we have to work very intentionally at our unity and being one in God together, one in Jesus together, so that there's not any open door for disunity. Because the Holy Spirit blesses his people who are unified under Jesus. Maybe you've heard of a man named D.L. Moody. Have you heard of him? Moody was an evangelist in the 1800s. 
He was from Chicago, but God used him to preach all over the world, bless so many people. Once, Moody was leading a revival in England, and uh, there were a bunch of people who were gathered together for this event, and they were listening to Moody, and, and there was kind of this little bit of an uproar in the crowd. Listen to what one of the people said about Moody. Why do we need this Mr. Moody? He's uneducated and inexperienced. Who does he think he is anyway? Does he think he has a monopoly on the Holy Spirit? And one of the others in the crowd stood up and said, Oh no, Mr. Moody does not think he has a monopoly on the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit has a monopoly on Mr. Mooney. Church, I don't know about you this morning. Where you are in that spiritual journey, whether you are beginning or growing or maturing in your relationship with Jesus, I don't know where you are necessarily today. But I can tell you this, and I hope that this is the same case for you. I want the Holy Spirit to have a monopoly on my life. Amen? Come, Holy Spirit. Come. Let's pray that together. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Spirit of God, through you we seek first the kingdom of God. Shape us. Make us more like Jesus. Bring us together as the body of Christ. Unify us. Focus us. Make seeking after you the very thing that we desire the most. Jesus, be glorified in Grace Church. Holy Spirit, come. It is through Jesus that we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Will you stand with me as we sing and as we worship Jesus? We're going to sing this last song, Have Thine Own Way, Lord. Make that a prayer of your own life. Let's stand together, let's sing, let's worship. What a good day to be in church.
It's good to be together as the body of Christ. I encourage you to keep inviting your friends and family to come and worship and experience the presence of the Spirit of God in this place. Now let me leave you with this blessing. Now unto Him who is able to do immeasurably more than all that we could ever ask or imagine, be glory in Him and in His church through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Go in peace.